Thank you very much, Dr. Knusli, for inviting me. I'm happy to be here, and I want to start with two thanks that I have to deliver to this distinguished auditory. First is to be here. Thank you that you woke up so early and that you got here in time for the first lecture of the day. I talked to many of you yesterday and said you should have, should do, and you did. Thank you very much. But the even more important thing I want to thank you for is, as you heard, I'm usually working in healthcare, uh, new systems in Germany, so we are talking about a quite luxury topic that we are working on. And the colleagues that I experience in these discussions that we are doing in the rest of my life have sometimes made me think about what it means to be a physician. And we're talking about DRGs and we're talking about money all the time. So I'm very happy to be here because you and this conference has helped me reset my orientation and I have again the impression that the IPP and W is concerned with things that matter and that we should really be concerned with rather than the distribution of money in the healthcare system and the health economy as we now call that. So let's come to another topic that we need to be concerned about and I'm happy to discuss with you some, let's say, hard stuff in terms of epidemiologic methods and you don't have to understand every detail but I have put many details on the slides because I want to be precise, it needs to be precise in these issues but I will explain the stuff from my view and so please don't be frustrated, this is just the, the let's say, the heart of the methods and we're discussing methods when it comes to childhood leukemia in nuclear power plants. An issue that has been around for many years, almost as long as nuclear power is around. And one of the, um, let's say, main examples of uh, there might be an effect is, is the Krummel cluster, which is close to the place of work where I used to work for 15 years in Bremen. What you see here is a circle of five kilometers only, and there's about 1,400 children living in this, in this circle, and all the black dots are childhood leukemia cases around the Krümmel nuclear power plant, a large boiling water reactor. And so this is definitely more than we would expect in this region. And we had, we done, we did several analyses. This is the most recent analysis showing that I have put some um, indicators here for you, showing that the incidence of childhood leukemia is about fivefold increased among the very, old, uh, very young people, very young children from zero to four years. And more striking, it's not only the cluster that has been in the news in the 90s, it's going on even after that. So after, uh, until today, there is a significant increase of childhood leukemia in that area. And we don't know why that is. It is most likely not the nuclear power plant, but rather a nuclear research institution, but there's no proof the only thing that is clear and beyond any doubt is that there is an increased childhood leukemia incidence. So the research will go on, and this is just few other. There's actually hundreds of publications on childhood leukemia and nuclear power all over the world. Many of the studies, particularly the good studies, are positive. That is, they show an increase. This is only a small um, a part of the studies that have been published. Recently, and this is more important, the first meta-analysis has been published from a person that many of you may know is not uh, suspicious to be a pro-nuclear, uh, an anti-nuclear activist. So Professor Hole from um, South, South Carolina is, is uh, um, let's say, outspoken supporter of nuclear power, but nevertheless he has engaged together with uh, his student Baker in this meta-analysis, and they did a quite strict analysis here. So they checked 37 studies and each study that um, is um, fulfilling the criteria that I put here was put in the analysis. So the study needed to study a, a leukemia, needed to have one uh, category of age of young people, less than 26. It needed to differentiate between leukemia and lymphoma. It needed to indicate geographical zones and it needed to give the numbers that you need to recalculate the risks. And what he did is put that together, did a, a, a proper methodologic analysis, meta-analysis, and what he comes up with is the uh, results that you see in the graph. There is an increase, particularly for the young people, 
around the nuclear power plants that you put in the analysis, and this is no longer a single site, this is now many sites that show that, not each site in itself, but all together. So this is what you would consider evidence. <coughs> this is the mortality. Mortality is also increased, is also significantly increased, but much less so. And of course, this we as doctors know why that is, because most of the sick children are cured, at least in the uh, in the well-off countries where we can afford the very expensive and intensive therapy. So mortality is not a good measure for uh, leukemia risk because it's mostly the doctors and it's mostly the social status of a country that determines mortality of leukemia and much less so the risk factors. What we need is incidence. So incidence is hard to measure and this is the first meta-analysis on this topic. We see a consistent increase around nuclear power plants which is the best evidence that we presently have with very simple <coughs> methods. I will go into the methods uh, very soon, but proper so. There's no indication for publication bias, so there's more actually papers uh, um, published uh, showing negative results for, for various reasons, and this is nuclear reactors from many countries. But he does not support, uh, provide an explanation of uh, why that is. In Germany, the discussion is particularly intense. And this is the start of the discussion is 92, where a group in Mainz, the University of Mainz, uh, under the head of uh, Jörg Michaelis, the then um, the professor for epidemiology in Mainz, now his successor is Maria Blättner. Many of you will know her from the, from the literature. And his group, including Peter Karch, who is the main author of the KICK study, which I will allude to in a minute. So back then the same group was working together and what they did is an analysis like this. All the sites of atomic uh, power plants in Germany were, um, uh, were studied <coughs> together with um, reference regions that were similar in terms of, that was not me, similar in terms of um, population density and, and uh, other demographic par parameters. And what he came up with was that there was no risk. The relative risk was 0.97, which means uh, there's no risk for all malignancies, and 1.06, that is again no risk for acute leukemia. And that was broadly discussed and communicated uh, following this study. It was not quite the case. There was risks, particularly for the innermost zones and uh, for the small children and for acute <coughs> leukemia. So Alfred Kerblein and others and myself, we have discussed and disputed the results, so he was forced to extend the study. He did more years, um, included more years from 1991 to 1995, published the results in 1998 um, with the uh, conclusion that giving this uh, larger uh, sample of data, even the analysis that Alfred Gertlein and myself alluded to are no longer significant and there's no uh, need for further research on that topic. So the topic is clear, there's no risk. Then Alfred Kerblein and myself felt obliged to publish a, a re-analysis of the data of Michaelis. And what you see here is only, let's say, the f all facilities. If you exclude the research reactors, which, of course, do not contribute much to the contamination of the, of the area, then it gets significant again. And you can do all kinds of analysis. The small children are still very significant, and so on and so forth. So it was not quite the case that there was no risk. But this is only to demonstrate to you that the group who did this study, which we will discuss now, is a group that does not believe in any risk by nuclear power. Because then, it is mostly, actually, the IPP and W had a major role in that process. There was a discussion going on and on, forcing the Ministry uh, of Environment, and particularly the, um, the Board for Radiation Protection, to do another study, which we designed as the definite study on the, on the topic. So I was on the scientific board for six years of this study, and so was Alfred Kerblein and other activists from the IPP and W. The, game, uh, the, the aim of the study was to, to clear the issue, so to make the best possible study on the issue of um, leukemia, childhood leukemia around German nuclear power sites. We designed it as an ecologic case control study. So that means no longer only circles. Now it's individuals that are being compared for their 
uh, vicinity of the residents to the next nuclear power plant. There was also a case control study um, uh, with contact, so with interviews, to assess possible confounders of the um, study participant, participants. The base of the data was, again, the Childhood um, Cancer Registry, which is very well maintained in Mainz and very complete, again, thanks to the physicians who are engaged in therapy for leukemia because that is mostly a register of clinical studies, but it covers 95% of all cases. So this study tried to individualize the risk. We got away with the, uh, we, we put down the, the um, 5, 10, 15 kilometer zone philosophy and rather looked for the individual distance to the next uh, power plant. This was the largest possible study because we took all sites that had commercial nuclear power use, in excluding the test sites. Um, we took all children with first incidents uh, with age 0 to 5, and we, um, put, or we assigned three counties around each nuclear power site to, um, f uh, f uh, to the study regions. So there's no, it started with 1980, um, uh, where also the register started and, and, and used all the cases that occurred until 2003. So this is the largest possible study in Germany. The controls are randomly selected in a complicated process by the population registries. So there's no bias in the controls. They reflect the, um, the same age group and the same sexes and the same social um, background. This is again the areas. You see there's little less areas because the test sites were left out and it was also um, considered the, uh, the years when the respective plants were in operation. So the blue lines means the plant was in operation and the white spots here means there was no plant in operation. So these areas uh, these time periods were not considered exposed. This is the result. Uh, it shows in the red dots the cases and in the green dots the controls. <coughs> so if you cannot read that instantly, then I have some tables to uh, analyze that more. So it shows that we have more cases in the direct vicinity. You can put it also this way. And as an epidemiologist, you have an idea, and also as a doctor I would say, that here there's some more going on than is here. So and this is the cases. And this is the, uh, uh, sorry, this is the um, controls and this is the cases. So we have a little left uh, shift in the uh, lower graph. If you put that in odds ratios, you can see that there is an increased odds ratio uh, in the direct vicinity. And the best analysis is this one. This was the a priori analysis. We said we want to check whether or not there is a systematic trend with distance from the plant, and the distance is modeled in, um, what is that, one divided by the distance. And this is actually the case. There is a significant trend going down when you uh, get farther away from the nuclear power plant, and the coefficient is, most, is, is the highest for um, all leukemias and the acute non-lymphocytic leukemias. So we have a significant trend. I'll show you the trend in a minute that is most pronounced for acute non-lymphocytic leukemias and it's also for all leukemias and it's also for some of the other cancers but less, less um, pronounced. So what you see here is the trend. This is very steep. That means it's rising highly to above two or three fold. When you come very close, means less than two kilometers to uh, the plants. So this was unexpected, of course, because it shows a dose-response relation, as we call that. The closer you live to a nuclear power site in commercial operation in Germany, the higher the leukemia risk for the children below five years in a case control analysis. So not believing that this could be true, a lot of sensitivity analyses were done. So all the com communities were excluded who could not provide controls. This is a method issue. There were 16% who couldn't do that. So they were excluded from the analysis. No change in risk estimates. We restricted that to controls whose addresses were, um, could be manually checked in a, in a validation study. Again, 
no change in estimates. And then an important analysis was done, leaving out each single of the nuclear power plants and rerunning the whole analysis, then leaving out the next nuclear power site, running the whole analysis again. This means also Krümmel was left out in one of the analyses, and all of the analyses leaving out uh, one of the <coughs> nuclear power plants were again significant. That means it is not due to any specific nuclear power plant, but rather a general effect around the nuclear power plants as a whole. And then it was communicated, maybe you heard that also, that there was no uh, check for confounding. Of course, there was a check for confounding, a quite intense interview study with more than 400 participants, and they were in detail asked about all possible risk factors. Sorry, this is only in German, but it says social uh, uh, background, it says other sources of radiation exposure, like uh, occupational uh, radiation exposure by, uh, of the parents. It says other risk factors, including uh, um, uh, exposure to pesticides in the homes and so on. Immunology, we have this immunology discussion. We can go into detail after the lecture, if you like. And other uh, known factors, we have spent three months with a whole committee to extract all possible confounders from the literature, and then we put them all in the study. And what comes out is, most importantly, there are some risks for some of these factors. So there are risks for these factors, but the most important thing is there is no change in estimate. This means change in estimate of the distance parameter. That means regarding the confounders that have been assessed in detail, they do not explain the distance trend. Or in other words, there is no confounding. There is other risk factors, as we knew, but they do not confound the um, distance trend risk. So there was another uh, hypothesis. This is the population mixing hypothesis. This could be nicely evaluated in this study. So it says that uh, leukemia is an infectious disease. By the way, we don't have the, the germ, uh, the bacteria or virus uh, for that so far. We don't have any immunology indicating that in Germany and so on. But anyway, so a nuclear power plant creates an influx of population is the hypothesis, and then these people coming newly <coughs> to an area, they bring with them strange viruses infecting the people living there and causing the leukemia. So you can see here the migration around the nuclear power sites and the, the time points where the, the nuclear power sites were put into operation and put out of operation are in all these little graphs here. And you see that there is migration and the migration is not at all uh, correlated to the start of a nuclear power plant, but it's rather correlated to the German reunification, which, of course, caused a lot of migration from the east to the west. So that's all, and there's nothing about this hypothesis. So if you hear that again, you can say that the kick study checked that and actually found out that there was no indication of any selective migration to nuclear power plant sites. So as long as you don't consider the German reunification a major childhood leukemia risk. So what is the conclusions now? We have a statistically significant association between the distance and the nearest nuclear power plant. So this issue is resolved. There is no way to make a bigger, larger, a better, uh, or more comprehensive study about this issue, at least not in Germany, and is by far the most detailed and methodologically best study in the world to that particular question. So there is a significant systematic increase of childhood leukemia risk in the vicinity of nuclear power plants in Germany. It is plausible that this concerns the young children, it is plausible that it concerns the acute leukemias, and it's plausible that it uh, uh, is in only in the very um, direct vicinity. So there is no effect in 20 kilometers distance. We have the strong dose response, which is a causality criterion in epidemiology, and it's consistent, as I showed you, with many previous observations, not only in Germany and also in many other countries. There is no evidence or relevant confounding, and if an issue that has not been addressed properly in the discussion so far. So there is no evidence or relevant confounding due to any other known risk factor. So in order to explain this excess, you would have to come up with an 
unknown risk factor, with a risk factor that has not been discovered by a committee who spent three months searching the literature. I'm excited about this risk factor, which would need to be a very strong risk factor, which would need to be very prevalent in the population and exclusively in the vicinity of nuclear power plants. So we, we have come up with some ideas, but they are all, let's say, not plausible. So what did the authors communicate? They also said the result was not to be expected under current radiation epidemiological knowledge, considering that there is no evidence of accidents and confounders could not be identified. The observed positive distance trend remains unexplained. And the other publication says the observation is unexpected. Given the observed levels of radiation, it's important to know that no radiation levels were observed. Of course, in the study, there was no measurements also on. It was only distance that was modeled. In the German uh, paper that was the official report on the study, the authors were a little more specific. They said, based on current radio radiobiologic and epidemiologic knowledge, the ionizing radiation emitted from nuclear power plants in Germany in normal operation cannot be interpreted as a cause on fundamental grounds. It says, grundsätzlich ausgeschlossen. Yeah? This is not granted. There is no evidence in the study whatsoever, and it's also illogical that you do a study to find something, and if you find it, you exclude the most, most plausible risk factor, or the risk factor that actually uh, was the reason for the study. So and then the press started. There was a massive communication uh, 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 scheme going on, very much uh, the same, um, along the same lines. It was always nobody disputed the fact that it was uh, in, um, increased, but they disputed the fact that it was due to radiation. So they say it is either due to chance or due to any other causes. Or Maria Bledner said, if you are hiking, particularly in the mountains, X-ray your teeth or fly by plane, you have a higher nuclear radiation risk than living close to a nuclear plant. That may be. Yeah? But there's not, no evidence for, let's say, an increased density of dentists in the vicinity of nuclear power plants. It is possible that unknown confounders are involved. Yeah, unknown, as I said. Um, but unknown is unlikely. The inconceivable cloud is in the uh, big picture here. Emotional debate. The the board, the, the official authority, was uh, uh, under suspicion to ideologically bias its own results because they wanted to have a risk there, which is, let's say, knowing the Bundesamt für Strahlenschutz for about 20 years now is quite, let's say, yeah, amusing because they have ever supported nuclear power use. Bias ideologically is an interesting um, connotation here. It's true that Maria Bledner says we must not panic because there is no reason for panic. We're talking about 160 to 200 additional childhood leukemia cases between 1980 and 2003. So you can judge whether this is a lot or not. It's definitely no reason to panic. But of course it's much more than we would accept if, if the uh, nuclear power plant people would uh, discuss that we have some childhood leukemia cases that we need to live with that come about their energy uh, generation um, idea. Experts disagree about risks. They agree about the risks, but they disagree about the cause. Extremely alarming and so on. This is the other side, serious side effects. So if you want to go deeper into that topic, I um, suggest you to read the, uh, the article of Rudi Nussbaum, who nicely discussed many of the methodologic issues uh, in the journal, International Journal of Occupational and Environmental Health in 2009. Um, I, I can, I can um, g g give you access to that paper. So he discusses that radiation risk models may be wrong. So if we found something unexpected in medicine, we would assume that we were wrong, and we now have new evidence to change uh, views about, the, let's say, a drug or something. So radiation risk models are wrong, which is actually true, but we don't have better ones so far. Methodologic problems, I told you, uh, may be wrong, may, may be due, maybe may the cause of the underestimation of radiation risk that we presently <coughs> have. I cannot go into that, but uh, we think that the lifespan study is about one order of magnitude underestimating the radiation risk. It's not more than that, but it's about one order of magnitude. 
So there's one order of magnitude of the three orders of magnitude that we need. Um, of course, we have highly variable local conditions. We have complex composition of reactor emissions. Some of the nuclides that are being emitted, there is no data whatsoever what they do with human health, particularly prenatally. So there's a very high gap of data that we would need to interpret these findings in quantitative terms and more so to exclude any effect of the radiation, of course. And as, I, as, as Rudi Nussbaum put it, there is no data on biologic action of many of the incorporated radionuclides. So I think I'm almost done. Am I? So just one, one little glimpse to stop. I have some more slides here showing the same discussion, actually with some of the same words, after the discussion on the Three Mile Island accident. Uh, there were people who say it cannot be that there is an increase of cancer and so on, which has nicely been shown by Steve Wing and colleagues. And I have some other slides here showing that it cannot be that there is thyroid cancer in uh, Belarus and the Ukraine. It, the, the pathologists were wrong. So the slides of the kids around Chernobyl were sent to Switzerland by, by uh, my colleague Abelin and others. And they were checked. And of course they were not wrong. All of these children had thyroid cancers. And the uh, EA, no? EIA a committee with more than 100 scientists who came back from Chernobyl said there was no somatic effects of the fallout. By that time, childhood thyroid cancers were already 30-fold increased. So the issue of not seeing what is actually there to not be forced to challenge a paradigm has a history, and this history is particularly strong in nuclear power. So this is a reason why we need to go on with the research. We need data, and we have a major major progress in the data in that at least the issue of increased risk in the vicinity of nuclear power plants is now resolved. And so let's start from there. Thank you very much.